This is part 22 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss including and excluding properties from model binding using interfaces. Please watch part 21 before proceeding with this video. In part 20, we have seen how to include and exclude properties from model binding by passing a string array to update model method. And in part 21, we have discussed achieving exactly the same thing but using the bind attribute. In this video, we'll see how to use interfaces and achieve the same thing. The first step is to create an interface. Notice that here, we are creating an interface with name I employee. And look at the list of properties that we have got here. We only have ID, gender, city, and date of birth. We don't have the name property. So this interface is going to specify all the properties that we want to include in model binding. Since we don't want name property to be involved in model binding, we have excluded that property from this interface. And the next step is to make the employee class inherit from that interface. In a bit, we'll understand why this employee class and this interface iEmployee has to relate to each other through inheritance. And the final modification is to edit underscore post controller action method that is present in employee controller class. Notice that here we are passing an ID parameter to this function. This ID parameter is going to receive the ID of the employee that we are editing. And using that ID, we are loading the existing details of the employee from the database. So at this point, this employee object you know, is going to have the data of the employee before data modification. So the ID, name, gender, city, date of birth, all these properties will have the existing data that's loaded from the database. And then the most important step is the call to this update model function. Notice that here we are passing in the interface type. And this interface has only got these four properties. It doesn't have name property there. So this update model will automatically invoke the default ASP.NET MVC model binder, which is going to look at these properties. And then using the posted form values, it's going to update only those properties that are present within this interface. So the model binder is not going to touch the name property. The name property will remain the same, even if the posted form contains a value for the name property. And then we hand that employee object to save employee method, which is going to save the details of the employee to the database table. And then we are redirecting the user to the index action, which is going to list all the employees there. Let's actually make these changes. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So our employee class is present in our business layer project. So the first step is to create the interface. So here we have this interface I employee. And notice the properties, we don't have name property because we don't want to include a name property in model binding. And then the next step is to make this employee class inherit from that interface I employee. Now let's go to our employee controller and let's pass ID parameter. So using this ID, we have to load the employee details, the existing employee details from the database table. So we are going to make use of this employee business layer object. So I'm going to get that single employee where the ID matches with the ID that we are passing in. And then I'm going to create an employee object here. At this point, we will have the existing details of the employee loaded from the database table. OK, and then I'm going to call update model function. Look at that. And then I can specify the type. OK, so I'm going to say pass in my I employee interface here. So the default ASP.NET MVC model binder at this point is only going to update the properties that are present in this I employee interface. And then we pass the employee object. Look at this. It's expecting an I employee type. But what object are we passing employee object? And what is the type of this employee object? It's employee class. I mean employee. But then since employee class and the interface are related through inheritance, you can pass it as an inherited type. So that's why this employee class and this interface has to relate to each other through inheritance.
So at this point, all the properties of the employee will be updated except the name property. The name is going to, uh, you know, uh, contain the existing data of the employee, even if the posted form is going to contain a value for that name property. And then we are checking the model state if it's valid. Uh, we are handing that object to save employee method, which is going to save the employee details to the database table. And we are redirecting the user to the index action. So with these changes, let's go ahead and run this and see if it's going to work as expected. So let's navigate to employee controller, index action. Let's fire up Fiddler. Let's click on edit. Let's delete the requests that are already there. And let's save this so that we'll have a post request. So this is that post request. Let's click on the composer tab. Let's drag and drop this post request here. And then here we can change all the properties. Let's say I want to change the name. At the moment, look at this. For this employee, name is XYZ. So let's go ahead and change that to uh, maybe ABC. And gender at the moment it is female, so let's change it to male. And city is Chennai, let's change it to London. And now let's go ahead and execute this. So at the moment it is uh, the name is XYZ, but we have changed that to ABC and we executed this. And even gender and city we have changed. So let's refresh this page and see if the data is changed. Look at that, only gender and city are changed, but name you know, is untouched. Okay, so it's possible to include and exclude properties using interfaces as well. So there are several ways to include and exclude properties from model binding. Depending on the requirements and project architecture, we can choose the approach that best fit our needs. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.